So, Rajan, hey. what do you want to know about me? <laughs> I'm interviewing you. Yeah, right? you look like the Asian Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> that, we, that's, we were, that's the dream. Yeah, we were choking backstage. So <laughs> he's like, "What's your? What are you doing next?" And I said, "My goal is to be the Indian Tom Brady." Um, so I'm so, a long way away from that. Okay, so so, so let's let's talk about you. Uh, we don't need to talk about me. So you're, look, you're you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> Uh, you helped create what ultimately became Groupon International through your company's City Deal. You, you headed, you founded Groupon Goods. Uh, you're now an advisor to Groupon. Uh, perhaps more importantly than that, your birthday was just a couple of weeks ago. That's right? true. Yeah. You turned the big three. 32. 32. 32. I'm like an adult now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I know that because your birthday is June 6th, right? Yes, that's correct. My daughter's birthday. She just turned one. She her birthday also June 6th. Uh -uh. And and how old were you when you sold City Deal to Groupon? We were. I was 26. So it's, 26. Yeah, just turned 26. Okay, so I'll give my daughter 25 more years <laughs> to, to to get to yeah. to where you were. So. Look, take me through some of your backstory. I mean, fascinating story. You were going to school in London, and you had this idea to, to take the Groupon concept and, and make it work there. How did you do that? Yeah, um, so I'd love to say that we started Groupon, uh, but we just copied the heck out of it. Um, and you know, back then, five or six years ago, there wasn't the spread of information that we have now today. And you know, the generation has changed over the last five or six years, and so we had an opportunity to take a look at business models. And I've been, I've been an entrepreneur, I'd failed in, 20 businesses prior to uh, to City Deal, I guess failure is relative, and, and we'd uh, we tried a bunch of stuff, and you know at that time we were just looking at really cool business models out there, and we were trying to be innovative, and we were looking at imitating models, and we were trying to take a look at what worked, um, and we saw Groupon as a, a model, um, and I was I just moved to London uh, and was looking at starting a business in Europe. Um, as I'd been to grad school out there, um, and we just loved the Groupon model, and they were about six, seven months old, um, and we just got really lucky. The timing was great, we liked the model, we copied the heck out of it, and we grew really, really fast. Um, and as I mentioned, we were around maybe just, just over six months before we got acquired. Um, yeah, and, and so I, I look at what happened in that six months, and you say you got lucky, you say you copied the heck out of it, but you also grew the heck out of it, right? You, it was this meteoric rise. How fast did you grow it, and, and why did you grow it that fast, and how did you grow it that fast? Yeah, um, we we were funded, uh, some of you may in the room might know Rocket Internet and the Zamor brothers. Um, you know, these, uh, I can say it now, because uh, I've got a relationship with them. Back then I was scared of them. Uh, but they, uh, they were these crazy German brothers, and they funded us with a ton of capital. Uh, we grew from, uh, there was three of us, we went from three to 500 employees in six months, um, which was just insane. We went from one to 18 countries, um, you know, and we grew to, I think by the end of our first year, we were 800 people. Um, and it was just insanity at the time, you know. Uh, that, yeah, and I, th and I can judge from the reaction here, other people think that's insanity too. How did you do that? Um, yeah, we just, you know, we, we, when something works, we stayed just laser focused. We, we saw a model that was working. It took us a couple months to really see that tipping point in the model. Um, and once we did that, it was just, you know, every, uh, every foot we had on the pedal. We had a really good team. I mean, again, I think that was the lucky part is that we had a team that just gelled really well together. And that's, you know, in sports, sometimes you have a team that doesn't have all rock stars on it, but when they gel really well together, they can make a deep run. And we had, we had that. And all the teams, uh, there was no ego involved. We were all very focused on the prize. Uh, we were flying a heck of a lot, taking trains, you know, buses, everywhere we could go, and we were just hiring people. Um, and our, our ethos was, you know, we never really had a description of who we would hire. We didn't have job postings at the time. It was hire smart people. Um, and we were just lucky we were capitalized, and that was, you know, we never posted with a specific job. We weren't looking for a developer. We weren't looking for salespeople. We said, if somebody's smart um, and somebody is motivated and has ambition, uh, we'll hire them, which was crazy at the time, but we were also, again, five, six years ago in a different world where, you know, everything was about growth and winning the market. Um, we had a hundred other people trying to do what we were doing, and we had to be number one. And the only way to do that was with scale. And uh, yeah, so. 500 people, 18 countries, and then um, Groupon made an offer that we can refuse. So. So, so, so what were some of the, the early successes that you had as you were you know, taking part in that, that meteoric rise that, that other people could look at and say, hey, maybe I could emulate that. Maybe I could learn from that. Yeah, I mean, for, for us, it was 
at first finding a way to, to, to and this is what the topic is today, is finding those customers. Um, and you know, for the first couple of months, we really struggled. We tried everything, and we, you know, we took a small round of funding, and we bled it to death. And we thought, okay, that's it, we're done. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll try something new. Um, we were lucky that our investors believed in us and somehow ponied up some more capital. And I think our big learning there was, um, you know, everyone says try little, little things, but you can die a very, very slow death if you, you know, try 50 things and burn 20 grand. There's a million, gone, million bucks gone. And so we had to take big bets. And we did. We gambled. Um, and What's an example of a big bet that you Yeah, made? so for the first couple months when we, when we you know, tried to acquire customers, nothing really worked. Um, and because we had the capital, we had the luxury of saying, okay, what is going to attract people to buy these deals? Back then, it was just a daily deal platform. It was, you know, it was what most people know Groupon as, and it's, it's evolved ever since. Um, we ended up, the, the home run for us that really changed the game, uh, we were within weeks of shutting down. Um, and the home runs for us was uh, I ended up uh, going to Odeon, which is the largest uh, cinema chain in the UK, and we ended up negotiating a deal. They they charged six pounds, which is equivalent of almost like nine or ten dollars to enter a movie. We negotiated a deal to buy movie tickets them for for about five pounds, and we bought a hundred thousand movie tickets for five pounds. We put an ad in the newspaper in the Evening Standard in London um, the next day and said, you know, citydeal mycitydeal.co.uk movie tickets for one pound. So we bought them for five pounds. We sold them for one pound. Buy high, sell half, low. Half a million pounds worth yeah. of movie tickets. And we sold them for 100,000 pounds, which doesn't seem like very good business. Um, and didn't seem like very good business to my investors at the time. Um, well, you lost 400,000 pounds lost, right I lost, the gate, right? If, if you look at it in that short period of time, I lost 400,000 pounds in a matter of three hours. Um, but we gained 100,000 customers, and our payback was nine days. And from that, we did that in 14 more countries, spend millions and millions of pounds on movie tickets, um, and we acquired these customers. And what we did was we we learned how to then really evolve the deals. So because it was one deal a day, we played our best deals, whether it was you know a beauty deal or a spa deal, then day afterwards, and we had the margin to recuperate um, that investment, and we really started skyrocketing. We acquired over a million customers in a week, and the game changed, and you know that really caught the attention of, of all the investors. And, and group on itself. See, I guess in, in retrospect, it's easy to look at that and think, oh, wow, that was a genius move. But that seems like a monumental risk to take. I, th I thought it was a genius move. <laughs> <laughs> Even at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was scared for my life. I mean, uh, how, how, do you, how did you gauge the risk and, and decide, okay, actually, maybe this is, this is a crazy move that might work? Um, you know, we, we, we did. We, I mean, I, it's, it's nice to tell that story. We started small, right? So we t the week before, we tested it with 1,000 movie tickets, right? And we saw, okay, this works. Uh, it broke even for us because we didn't have the right deals following it. Uh, but we said, hey, there's an opportunity to do something there. So yeah, I mean, we were, we were testing it small. But it was really about saying, hey, we've got to take a bet on something. And look, it could have easily failed. And there's so many companies that take those bets and they fail. But one of the things that I learned, and I think maybe that's, that's something to share with everyone else, is investors invest in you to take risk. Um, and you have to be okay to take risk. And we always feel the pressure that in the first couple companies I started that I had outside capital in, um, you know, you were afraid to lose that money. It was your face. You know, it's, you've posted on Facebook to all your family and friends that you started this company and it cannot be a failure. Um, and I understand that because I've been there. And when you get over that thought and you realize you've taken investment from investors who are putting their money at risk to make more money. They're not investing in you because they like you, they're investing in you because they're greedy and they want to make money, that's their business. Um, and you know, in a, in, a, in a good way of greed, I'm an investor as well, right? I'm investing to get a return on capital um, and they want you to, and they're usually investing for high returns if they're investing um, you know, at the seed stage or early stage. Um, you gotta be okay to spend their money and you gotta be okay to tell them that you're gonna spend their money. And once you do that, you do it with confidence, um, there's, there's a good chance you can win if you, if you bet correctly, so. When we talk about growth, you know, one of the big, the big aspects of that is, is forging successful partnerships, uh, be they national, international, what have you. What, what's, uh, first of all, what's your, your broader philosophy on that in terms of you know, finding the right partnership and making sure it's the right fit and that you grow it properly? Um, it, it just comes down to focus, right? Especially as your companies become more successful or um, even if you're at an early stage, it's really identifying in a closed room by yourself as a strategy of what partnerships 
you want to build to make sure that you get to the goal that you're trying to achieve. Um, because in this world, right, you'll come to this conference and you'll meet, you know, 100 people, and it's, it's the key is not to get distracted uh, with all these great opportunities. I mean, I won't say who it is because it's binded, but early days, we got an offer to do a partnership with a huge company that was way beyond our scope. Um, and within seconds, the answer was no. And it was to meet the CEO of one of, like, the world's greatest company, right, which is very exciting at the time. And you want to fly to San Francisco and, and, and talk to them, and, you know, and you feel like you're playing in that field. But the answer is to say very, very disciplined. And, you know, if Zuckerberg or Bezos call you and say, hey, we want to do a partnership with you, um, but that's not in your DNA or that's not what you're trying to achieve, don't do the partnership. Don't even make the flight because that's very distracting. Well, see, this, this is what I was going to ask you in the sense that when you're, when you're looking at potential partnerships, I mean, you can go big or you can go small. And, and some people might have the philosophy, hey, if I just get that one big partner, that's just going to set me right up for, for the home stretch. Your view on that? Yeah, I, I, I did that. So when we started City Deal, uh, the first week was, okay, we'll just get Starbucks on the platform and everything will be solved. You know, we would do a deal for Starbucks, $5 for $10, we'll sell a million of these things, we'll be rich and we'll buy lots of sports cars and be happy. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I got escorted out of security in Starbucks UK office in month two, physically escorted out trying to, trying to meet their managing director. And, you, you know, you realize pretty quickly that that's not the, that's not the way to, to build it. And, and, you know, all these big companies, and we became a big company over a period of time. Groupon's now 12,000 people. Um, so we've been on both sides, right? We've been the small startup of three guys, and we became a company with 12,000 people. Uh, and you see there's just a lot of bureaucracy at a certain point, and that's okay. I mean, that's, that's what you need in a company. It's difficult to access. So. And, and so I, I want to get back to that, that being escorted out by security. <laughs> because I mean, dr drill down into, into the specifics for me. So, so let's say, you like know, how I, I got escorted out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was it an arm lock? <laughs> was it a, you know, what? no. Uh, <laughs> but how, how do you approach the, the conversation, the negotiations? I mean, because that, that particular instance, it didn't end so well for you. But how do you, how do you approach it? I mean, is there a certain mindset that you go into it? Is there a tactic that you have, a strategy that you have when you go into saying, okay, you, I want to work with, let's make it happen. Yeah, I think it's, it's first off, getting noticed, right? You know, it's, it's, it's that concept of getting the meeting and then actually having a viable meeting, right? Because you can, to get a meeting is, is, is a tactic in itself. Uh, we realized that if we wanted to play in the big merchant role, like, you know, Groupon was about local merchants and we were trying to attack this national merchant and eventually we wanted to get to that scale, but um, it's kind of like, you know, being at a bar and dating and you, you know, you want to be, you know, there's that girl or guy that you want to meet over there in the corner, there's two ways to get noticed. You get noticed by by talking to another very attractive person that might distract them and say, oh, wow, that person's popular, let me talk to them. Or you get distracted by having 50 different girls or guys around you, right, which is already very, very noticeable. And whether those 50 are the Starbucks of the world or small little merchants, if 50 people are surrounding you, that's, you know, a way to attract people. And that's how we decided to look at it, saying, why don't we get a bunch of small merchants, you know, all the small coffee shops, for example, um, and if we have an aggregate of 30 or 40 or 50, Starbucks is going to take notice. And, you know, behold, three or four years later, we're doing, you know, big deals with Starbucks because they realize they have to be at the table because the aggregate is equivalent to one. Um, and, you know, I think to get into these merchants, um, you have to be creative and you have to find ways to really give them a value proposition, right? P too many people are trying to sell stuff that just doesn't make sense. Um, and I think it's really about you know, focusing on these, you know, hyper-local or, you know, an aggregate of smaller companies uh, to get the big companies to take notice. Because they do, right? Big box companies, their biggest competitors are local merchants now. And so they're, you know, they're looking at those companies to see what they're doing because they're a lot more nimble. We don't have much time left. Uh, I, I will take a moment to see if there are any questions out in the field there for you. Sure. But uh, first thing, you did want to mention that, that there's a startup, a Canadian startup that you just got involved with, Envy Sleep? Yeah, I told them I'd give them a plug. So <laughs> um, it's, uh, there's a couple of companies out there doing it, but uh, I just, uh, I've been doing a lot of investing since leaving Groupon and doing the advisory. And one of them is uh, a company called Envy Sleep, that's E-N-D-Y Sleep. Dot com, check it out, um, and they're a direct-to-consumer mattress startup, and there's a couple of companies out there doing this. Um, they've been really successful at Toronto. They ship a mattress directly to your door, um, and I, I led their investment round uh, earlier this year, and they've just skyrocketed. Um, you click and order a mattress, it's a quarter of the price of a Tempur-Pedic, it's shipped directly to your door, um, and yeah, it's been wildly popular, so we're excited about that. Any, uh, any questions? Anyone want to throw something out there? We have, a, we have about 36 seconds left, if there's anything out there in the crowd. Yeah, go for it. Um, that's a great question. I was in the room when that happened. Um, 
because they really believe that they can build the world's local largest marketplace. And up until a year ago, the valuation was above $6 billion, so it was a smart move. So uh, it's an easy question to ask today. I think we'll know in five to 10 years whether it was the right move. All right, Rajan Ruparel, so good hey. to have you here. Eh? Thanks, Andrew.